Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to start by importing the data we'll be using to train and test our network. The brightness of each pixel is represented by a value between 0 and 1, with 0 being black and 1 being white. The images are 28 by 28, so that's 784 values for a single image. These 784 values are stored in a column vector. Each image also has a corresponding label. This is a column vector with 10 entries, 9 of which are 0, with the 1 telling us which digit the image is supposed to represent. This data comes originally from the MNIST database, but I formatted a little to make it easier for us to load and use in the series. There'll be a link to download it in the description. Okay, so I'm going to start by adding this file to my digit recognition folder. And as you can see, this is called mnist.npz. npz, by the way, is just a format for storing multiple NumPy arrays. So in the program, we can load this in with numpy.load, and then the path to that file. So since it's in the same folder as the script, we should just be able to use its name. Uh, mnist.npz, and I'll quickly run that to make sure that it's working. Uh, for some setups, you may have to use the absolute path here, but if you're having trouble getting that working, there'll be some more info on it in the description. Okay, now I want this file to be closed automatically when we're done using it, so I'm just going to use this with statement here, and assign this to a variable called data, and now inside this block we can get the arrays from the data file. So if we want to see what the data file actually contains, we can quickly print out data.files, and I'll run that. And you can see we've got training images, training labels, and then also test images and labels, as well as validation images and labels. We'll just be worrying about these first two for now, though. So to load these in, I'll come up here and create a variable called training images, and set that equal to the training images from the data file. Same thing for training labels, that's equal to data, with a key of training labels. Alright, let's now make sure that this is all in the format that we expect. So I'll print out training images.shape and also training labels.shape. So now if I run that, we can see we've got these 784 by 1 vectors for the images as expected, and there are 50,000 of them in the training set, and then we've also got 50,000 of these 10 by 1 label vectors. So let's try just printing out one of these images. I'll print out the first one, run this, and you can see we get this column vector, and if we scroll through this, you can see all of our brightness values here between 0 and 1. And let's print out the corresponding label, so I'll go training labels, print that out, and you can see we've got 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's in the sixth place. So that means this is an image of the digit 5. Now, if you actually want to view the images, you'll need to download something like Matplot Library. And I'll just very quickly show how you could use that. So we'd import matplotlibrary.pyplot. And I'll just call this plt for short. And then we can say plt.imshow and we'll pass in one of our training images. So I'll just pass in the first one again. And we need to reshape this into its original 28 by 28 form. And we'll just tell it to interpret the values as grayscale values by saying color map is equal to gray. Finally, we just need to say plot.show. And then we can run this. And that will pop up. And it is indeed a 5, as we saw from the label. I'm not actually going to keep this display code since we don't really need it, but that's how you could do that if you wanted to. Alright, let's now try passing this training data through our network. So I'll set the input layer size to 784. And we can delete this dummy input we were creating earlier since we've got the actual input now. And then I will pass the training images into the prediction method. I'll then print out prediction.shape. And if I run this, you can see that uh, our predictions are 50,000 of these 10 by 1 vectors. 
So by comparing these to the training labels, we'll be able to see how many the network is getting right. Let's try printing out just uh, one of these. So I'll print out the first prediction. So remember, we're interpreting each of these numbers as essentially the likelihood of it being a particular digit. So uh, we'd want to look for the highest one here, which I think is this last one, 0.62. So we'd say the network is predicting this image as a 9, which of course we know is wrong. It should be a 5, but that's what it currently thinks. Of course, if we run this again, we'll get a different output, because remember the weights are being randomized at the start. By the way, if we want to know which of these values is the highest, we can use this function called argmax, passing in the vector, and it will uh, give us the index of the highest value. So if I run this now, you can see it actually guessed it right this time as a 5. If I run it again, now it's guessing that it's a 2. Let's now go over to the neural network class. And I'd like to create a method to print out the accuracy of the network. So I'll create a method print accuracy, and this will take in images and labels, and it can start by getting the predictions. So it will just call self.predict, pass in the images. And now we want to compare these predictions to the labels to see how many we got right. So I'll do a list comprehension saying for a comma b in zip predictions comma labels and then for each of these pairs I want to check if the index of the highest value in a is the same as for b. So I can say numpy.argmax of a equal to numpy.argmax of b. So we now have this list filled with true and false values, which can also be interpreted as ones and zeros. So we just need to sum those all up to get the total number that were predicted correctly. So I'll say num correct is equal to, and we can just use the sum function and pass in the list. Let's then have our printout. So I wanted to first print the number that it got correct out of the total number that there were, and then the accuracy as a percentage. So now we say dot format and we pass in the values for those. So num correct, and then for the total number, we can just pass in the length of either the images or the labels, they'll both be the same. And then for the accuracy, that will be number correct divided by the total number and then just multiply that by 100 to get it as a percentage. Okay, let's save that, go back to the program and instead of running this prediction I'm just going to say net dot print accuracy passing in training images and training labels. Let's run that and see how it does. So it's getting 6,020 out of 50,000 correct. That's an accuracy of 12% uh, for the current weights. If I run this again, I get 7% accuracy. I'll run this one last time, and you can see we're averaging around 10% accuracy. And since there are 10 possible labels, this is exactly what we'd expect for random guessing. So, in the next episodes, we'll be looking at how to train the network to vastly improve its accuracy. But until then, cheers!